Today marks the 80th anniversary of D-Day. On this day in 1944, Allied troops landed on the shores of Normandy, France. Soldiers known as the Bedford Boys from the town of Bedford, Virginia, were among the thousands that stormed the beaches of Normandy in the D-Day invasion at 6.36 in the morning. By day's end, 20 of those young men from Bedford lost their lives on Omaha Beach. It is considered the nation's highest per capita D-Day loss. Ten years later, on June 6, 1954, a ceremony was organized by a writer for the Bedford Bulletin, Kenneth Crouch, dedicating a memorial stone to those men. It brought 5,000 people to the steps of the Bedford County Courthouse that day. And every year since, we commemorate this important day in our history at the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford. And that's where we find WDBJ 7's Melissa Gayona. She joins us now live. And Melissa, you, under, you attended that commemoration today, and I understand it was quite a moving experience. Yes, Natalie, uh, to say the least, uh, you know, we heard earlier today someone say that it just sends chills down your spine, uh, not only chills down your spine, but tears to your eyes hearing some of the stories that were told here today. As WDBJ7 made our way onto the D-Day War Memorial here in Bedford, there were so many people here beginning at really six o'clock this morning, whether it was volunteers, World War II veterans, a few D-Day survivors and also just families of veterans, regular veterans that served in every single branch of the military, just wanting to pay their tribute, honor and respect today. This was a beautiful ceremony that was put on by the folks here at the D-Day War Memorial. We do want to go ahead and bring in my co-worker Joe DeShiel, who was able to uh, just talk to some of the folks as they made their way onto the grounds. Uh, Joe, when we talk about the ceremony, a beautiful ceremony ceremony today, but what really stood out to you? Well, Melissa, it's always a moving ceremony here, as you pointed out. One thing that they do well here that I really appreciate is there are not a lot of speeches. Um, most of the ceremony were was uh, taken up with oral history, so mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the remembrances of the people who actually lived D-Day and experienced it, and I think, uh, so you get to hear, you know, straight from uh, the folks who experienced it, and I think it also speaks to the value and the importance of the D-Day Memorial moving forward. As more of these veterans leave us, uh, the memorial is going to be left here to carry on and keep that history alive. Yeah, you know, Joe, uh, right in line with the theme here today, which was every story lives on. Uh, it was really amazing to see some very big names up at the podium today, and it, it wasn't about them. As Joe just mentioned, they shared stories of actual brave men and women who experienced D-Day for themselves. Um, now, one thing I want to mention too is that when we look at uh, some of the the personal things that happen here today you have a story coming up for us later today tell me a little bit more about just the impression of what we'll see sure so obviously there were people coming here from all over the country even the world there were people from foreign countries representing other nations um, so I interviewed veterans from Tennessee and as well as here Franklin County um, we also did see the governor, um, uh, Jason Myers, the attorney general was here. He was reading one of those oral yeah. histories. The governor actually delivered the speech, and he spoke eloquently about the Bedford boys and the, the sacrifice that this community made on D-Day. And then there were the veterans. Another moving part for me was when the uh, World War II veterans and the two D-Day veterans who were here were recognized, and they were uh, they came across the, the bridge here and uh, to great applause and cheers from the crowd. Some of them were saluting. Uh, they seemed to really be enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, it took me a while, but I was eventually able to speak with one of the D-Day veterans, um, wow. Robert Boulay, who's from Florida. He is 100 years old. Uh, he uh, uh, went into the, the Marine Corps as a 16-year-old, mm -hmm. and he was on the battleship Texas. Uh, during the D-Day uh, assault. And so we did speak with him and that was an honor as well. 
All right, Joe, looking forward to your story. Thank you so much for giving us a little insight uh, to what you actually saw today in your perspective. We appreciate that. Also, one thing to note is that there were so many people just flooding uh, the grounds here at the War Memorial. That reception was tough, so it was hard for us to send our coverage back to the station. So we'll try to get Joe DeShield's story to you as soon as we can. Speaking of those personal stories, we heard from one of the oral histories that spoke about nurses, a lot of women nurses who were on aircraft and their job was to transport brave men who were wounded and get them to hospitals. They said not only that day did they play the role of nurse, they played the role of listener, mother and friend. We have another powerful story for you that you won't want to miss coming up tonight on WDBJ 7 at 6. Isabella Ladon was able to speak to someone who may not have stormed the beaches of Normandy, Isabella, but she was able to experience uh, this the D-Day battle from a hole. Right, so Paulette Higgins, she grew up in Normandy as a child, and when D-Day happened, she was actually hiding out in a hole under a blanket. Now, this was not a, a bunker hole. This was a legitimate mud hole. And she was under a blanket with her mother, her father, and her siblings, and she was out there just a mile and a half away from Utah Beach. She told me that she heard the bombs and she heard the gunfire happening from very, very close. And when I was speaking with her, she was telling the story and she just told me how important it was that we keep telling these types of stories. She said it was very painful to bring up, um, but that it's important to remember these types of things. Now she it's really great that, uh, that people celebrate today because those, those guys, those thousands of guys give their life now, Paulette Higgins, she has been living in Virginia for 25 years and she traveled from Alexandria to be here today in Bedford. I'm really honored to share her story that's coming up later today at WDBJ7. All right, can't wait to hear that, Isabella. Thank you. We appreciate all the coverage that you and Joe both have been doing here as really we have been here all day, Natalie, just gathering information and really taking it all in on this, not just a somber day, Natalie, but this was a day of celebration, a day to honor so many people because even even when you think about uh, the Canadians, the British and the American soldiers, they weren't just fighting for one country. They were fighting for their friends. They were fighting for allied forces. And it was a beautiful thing that they shared here today about taking um, just looking out for your friends and taking that responsibility and that unfortunately freedom does cost. But one thing that they said that stuck with me today was this. You had so many brave men that died on D-Day that day so that freedom did not have to die. Absolutely. Beautifully put, Melissa. And I understand that there were two D-Day veterans in attendance today, which yes. is really remarkable, and several World War II veterans. And we need to hear their stories yeah. while they're, yeah. they're still with us. Melissa, reporting live for us. Thank you. Appreciate it.